I recently asked myself why all portable shortwave transceivers are designed for a maximum of 10 watts. One could argue that the device would become too heavy and unwieldy. But wouldn't it be great if there were a 100 watt portable device with an integrated battery? No tangled cables to the amplifier, everything integrated. Impossible. The power consumption would be too high, the batteries couldn't deliver the power. I don't think so. I asked Grok about this topic. There doesn't seem to be a single 100 watt portable shortwave device with a built in battery on the market. But that's not entirely true. There was nearly one about 20 years ago. A 100 watt portable shortwave device, all mode, all band, 100 watt with a battery compartment. Limited at that time to 20 watts. But I have now changed that. Thanks to a relatively simple modification, the device now delivers full power. The world's only 100 watt portable shortwave transceiver with integrated battery. Let me introduce it to you. The new old Yaesu FT897. The battery compartment now has space for 12 21700 lithium ion cells instead of the original NEMH batteries. The configuration is 3S4P, 4 cells in parallel, 3 in series. The total capacity is approximately 21 ampere hours or the equivalent of 237 watt hours. Due to the FT897's undervoltage protection, the battery can only be used down to 10 volt. This results in a loss of approximately 14% capacity. However, 203 watt hour still remains, which is sufficient to operate the device for many hours. To circumvent the 20 watt limit of the original FT897, special electronics are used to switch the battery pack via the same connection as the external power supply. The switchover works automatically. If an external voltage is present, the external supply is used. If not, the device switches to the battery pack. So what we see here, uh, this is what the FT897 gets. We get 12.2 volt, and this is the voltage from the battery. So now, if I turn on here the voltage, the external voltage, this is connected here. If I turn this on, I have here 15 volts. If I turn this on, we should see here 15 volts. So I'm turning this on. And the, the boards turned off these MOSFETs and turned on this MOSFET. So we see now 14.97 uh, volts. If I turn this off, he's switching back to the battery. Zack, and he's back to 12.2 volt. So you may ask, what is if this voltage, this voltage, the external voltage is lower than the battery voltage, will this still work? Let's test it. I'm going to 11 volt now here. And we have here 12.2, I'm turning this on. And the battery pack switches, ah, the battery pack, the circuit board switches still to the external voltage. There is also a modern BMS circuit to protect the battery, as well as a voltage regulator for 5 volt so that the Raspberry Pi can be connected later, and a charging circuit for the battery. 
Unfortunately, the charging circuit could not yet be tested because Mauser did not deliver a necessary chip for it. Very strange. But I will get it sorted out. The battery pack can easily deliver the necessary 20 amps. There is hardly any heat generation. Of course, the whole device is not lightweight. However, this is mainly due to Yaesu's extremely robust construction with aluminium wall thicknesses of up to 1 cm. The sheet metal covers alone weigh almost 1 kg. So there is still a lot of room for improvement. Despite everything, heads off to Yaesu for deciding to build such a device more than 20 years ago. 36, I will go to 100. 100 watts, I'm on 40 meter. The mode, yeah, let, uh, let the packet. I'm on calibrate. Calibrate is king down. And we have, if you look in the middle, nearly 90 watts. This is the most what I can make. 90 watts portable power. Amazing. Please let me know in the comments if a 100 watt portable device would be of interest to you. I think it's time to break through this 10 watt portable barrier. Thanks for watching.